This is Andrew Plank with Pemberton Homes. Today we're going to review multiple offers uh, and this is an overview for sellers from the seller's perspective. So what is a multiple offer? Multiple offer is of course when you've listed your home for sale and you have multiple people interested in buying your home at the same time. So you're going to receive uh, a number of offers and there's procedures around the presentation that we'll review but you're going to receive a number of offers that will be open for a certain length of time and the idea is is that we want to sit down and review these offers in a timely manner give you a chance to come up to the conclusion of which is the best and in your best interests so I just want to run through what can happen here so first of all once your property is listed on market we're going to start getting showings and if from those showings more than one buyer is interested in your property they'll meet with their agents they'll write up an offer generally they'll inform me that an offer is coming in uh, and I can then get you informed and we could set up a time to meet and review those offers sometimes we um, if we anticipate multiple offers right off the bat we may have already pre arranged a time for us to meet to review offers um, and we can even post that into the listing remarks for agents to say okay offers will review, be reviewed if there are any offers Saturday at 8 p.m. or what have you so we've listed your home we've been informed of more than one offer and we're going to sit down to review it so first of all there's a little bit about representation here I represent you the seller my duties are to you, confidentiality, undivided loyalty, and so forth. Sometimes I have more than one buyer that I'm working with who is actually interested in your property. Now at that point there's a whole other conversation around what's called limited dual agency, but as a general rule I try to avoid representing buyers on my own listings. That helps uh, avoid conflicts of interest, obviously, and sometimes it cannot be avoided because I've already got a relationship with a buyer, but for example if someone calls up on the property and is interested in writing an offer because they and I haven't been working with them but uh, they've called me they saw the sign we've walked through I will probably push them to another agent uh, especially if we are dealing with uh, a multiple offer situation because I do not want to be in a conflict of interest so that aside we're going to uh, talk about timelines so one of the important parts of this is transparency if you have more than one party interested in buying your home we want to be as transparent as possible with giving uh, equal information to all interested parties and keeping everyone informed as to any changes in for example when we're meeting to present offers when we'll be reviewing offers and so forth so review of offers um, let's assume we've got three offers two offers five offers we're gonna or we're gonna review them and generally we'll review them in the order they were received so that there's not really any um, preference that is uh, communicated in terms of which you should receive it'll be this one was received first this was the next one this was the next one now the presentation will either happen um, if you're a local seller and you live in town then I will hopefully be meeting with you to review the offers and discuss them with you but if for some reason we're unable to meet then we can do a lot of communication through phone through Skype you may be out of town there's other ways to review offers uh, in which we can communicate very well so we're going to um, sit down to review those offers and the agents who have made those offers they may have emailed them to me they may actually have them in a folder or in an envelope and they may wish to come and actually meet us during that time for review and actually give a presentation of their offer meaning they're going to run through the contents of that offer all of the various terms and conditions the price and so forth and maybe give us an overview as well of what who their sellers are who their buyers are that is and um, they may be trying to tweak a little bit of the emotional appeal of those particular buyers because of course if you have two offers in front of you that are virtually identical um, it may be that you're going to choose the one that you feel you most relate with or you most hope to have as the buyers of your home so these are some of the things to watch for so if there are agents coming by to present number one if you don't feel comfortable with that that's your option and you can inform me that you do not want to have uh, a presentation we may need to get that in writing but absolutely it's at your discretion 
you do not have to have an agent pres present their offer. We can just meet you and I. Um, now, if they do come to present, to present their offer, we will have them come in, sit down, uh, review the offer details. I may ask them a few questions. I will ask that you keep a poker face, whether you love the offer or hate the offer. We're just going to remain very objective, uh, allow them to review the offer for us, and then once we're complete with them, we'll ask them to thank you, and they will step out. And they may wait in their car, or they may go home, but they'll be waiting for a response from us. We may have some questions for them. We may call them back in with some questions after you and I have discussed. But again, they will be gone after they've made their presentation. So your options. You can, if you're looking at more than one offer, you can accept one of those offers, of course. You can also reject all the offers um, if none of them are actually to your liking. Or you could counter one of those offers, meaning you're going to say, well, I like this particular one, but it's not, I don't like it enough to actually just accept it. We're going to make a counter offer, a counter proposal back to the buyers and these particular buyers. You don't want to counter more than one offer at a time, because once you do that, you've got two buyers who can actually accept, and then you will have actually sold your place twice. So our options are, again, accept one, counter one, or reject them all. Uh, so when we're evaluating offers, we're going to look at a number of things. Um, how close are they in terms? Uh, how close are they meeting your needs for um, length of time for completion and possession? What are the, uh, how much of a deposit is being put down? What's our feeling on the ability of the buyers to actually complete? And we may get some information from the listing agent, from the buyer's agent that is, or we uh, may be able to intuit some information from the terms and conditions written into the contract as to their ability to actually go forward because most offers, even with multiple offers, are conditional, meaning the buyer will be interested in buying your home, but there will be conditions on the purchase, such as conditional on a building inspection or conditional upon financing and a number of other conditions. So even though the highest priced offer might be attractive to you, it may not be the best offer in the sense that it, if that buyer doesn't actually proceed because uh, they cannot get their financing, then they really weren't available to us in the first place. So again, evaluating the offers on all of their merits is really important. We'll go through and discuss all of those. Um, keeping in mind emotions play a big part in this. It's a really good idea to be already familiar with a per what a purchase contract looks like. I'm happy to review the purchase contracts with you in advance. I'm happy to send you copies of what a purchase contract looks like so that the terms and conditions and all the general most of the, the more common scenarios we can review in advance and so that again when we're sitting down in a multiple offer situation and agents can be a little bit mm, well they're eager because of course uh, there can be only one if there's multiple offers and they will be trying to put their best foot forward and they may be actually um, really trying to put some time pressure on us and by this I mean offers can be open as an offer for a specified length of time and once that time has come and gone that offer is no longer uh, on the table. Time is of the essence here uh, within a contract or a contract to purchase a sale offer. So if that time frame comes and goes and we haven't accepted that offer and then we accept the offer after the time frame has, has passed, well, that's not enforceable upon the buyer now. So they may put tight timelines, they may be trying to put some pressure on us to make an, accept an offer. So the more objective we can be, but also the more we can sort of measure and uh, maintain emotion is important. And I will help with all of that. And uh, I tend to try to keep a calm demeanor through all of this. So terms and conditions can really vary. And you can look at two offers that have the same price, but one might be clearly better because uh, it's cleaner. And by that, I mean, maybe they're the same price, but maybe one is very conditional on you know, ensuring that uh, the home is completely cleaned prior to the sale, that, that the buyer, the seller will remove particular items and do this and do that, and it's very onerous. Uh, I've seen contract offers where they ask that, you know, you paint a wall or so forth, and another contract offer may actually be not conditional at all. It could be unconditional, meaning they'll say it's a cash offer. If you accept this offer, it is sold. Your place is unconditionally sold under contract. Uh, Keep that in mind, though, until monies have changed hands at the completion date, um, anything can still happen. And I have also seen situations where, in a, especially in a multiple offer situation, buyers um, are a little too optimistic in their ability to pay. 
And so although they said they didn't need financing and they've made a cash offer, until it actually completes, you're not there for sure. So don't go spending the money until it's in your pocket. Uh, anyway, so that's all for now. If you have any particular questions, and every scenario is different, so we'll deal with them as they come. But as a general overview, I hope that's helpful, and thanks very much.